I want to start by saying I do not resist change, but I resent psychological operations perpetuated on the population without full disclosure and expecting everybody to go along with it. I also do not appreciate deception, manipulation, and other forms. Anyways, so let's start this video. So, the new normal comes in many different names. It's the title of this subtitle, Shifting Baseline Creeping Normality. I'm making this because I'm concerned that all of these terms I'm going to present are defined and understood, most likely by think tanks, and I want you to see how some of these definitions seem academic and as if they are just natural events that occur. But know that once these things are defined and quantified and strategized, they then can be reproduced. And that's what I want you to be concerned with. So we do not study these tactics, but they do. And they have so many variants, which you'll see. Nobody, but nobody is deception. I get insulted when people try to play me for the fool. So when these mechanisms of society are trying to fool me and gaslight me into believing that what they're saying of which seems so preposterous by any analysis, and then they require you to believe it, that's where I have the problem. So when I say no nobody, but nobody is deception. It was when Homer was offended that the aliens were trying to fatten them up to eat him. I was a naive kid, but I initially became aware of these tactics from watching the documentary Pimps Up, Hose Down, which was on HBO. In it, the pimp described that pimping was not simply selling prostitutes. Pimping was seeing how far you could take somebody before they say no. And then when they do say no, finding out what the consequences are or if they really mean no. Finding where they draw the line in the sand. The line in the sand is the baseline, shifting baseline. And now when it comes to the new normal, the new normal, it is so vague. What does, they never define what the new normal is. They, everybody says it. They have all these talking heads, corporate people, Kool-Aid drinkers. They all say, oh, the new normal, the new normal, the new, it's like they're in on something, but they don't disclose to you what they specifically mean when they say the new normal Gee, boy, it's the new normal. When you hear vague terms call out for specificity, what exactly do you mean when you say the new normal? What is the new normal? Find out what they mean. I bet you they don't even answer the question. And they don't answer it, one, because they're up to something, or two, they don't know. They're just going along with the Kool-Aid. Let's examine what Wikipedia says about the new normal. A new normal is a state to which an economy, society, etc. settles following a crisis. When this differs from the situation that prevailed prior to the start of the crisis. You, you remember? You never want a serious crisis to go to waste. And what I mean by that, it's an opportunity to do things that you think you could not do before. A crisis allows us to shift the baseline and go into the new normal. The term has been employed in relation to World War I, September 11 attacks. Oh man, was that a shifting baseline? The financial crisis of 2007 to 2008, the aftermath of the 2008-2012 global recession, the, you could see it on screen, that word, and other events. And then in popular culture, this one's important. Pay attention to everything I say on this one. Just in case you don't know this one, this book is a really good book. The Moon is a Harsh Mistress by Robert Heinlein. You might know him from Starship Troopers, but he also did A Stranger in a Strange Land. If you never read that, it's considered the greatest science fiction book of all time. But author Robert Heinlein used the phrase in his 1966 novel, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress, with a character telling lunar colonists, citizens, check this out. Think of Australia 2021. Citizens, request may reach you through your comrade neighbors. I hope you will comply willingly. It will speed the day when I can bow out and life can get back to normal. A new normal, free of the authority, free of the guards, free of troops stationed on us, free of passports and searches and arbitrary arrests. This is 1966, which leads me to that, those previous slides where I'm saying, 
the new normal is not a new term. They have so many of these terms to find a playbook. It's up to us to learn their playbook so their playbook will no longer be effective. It's effective when they're able to successfully manipulate you. And there was a new, <laughs> the new normal TV series. It's a show about a, gay, a wealthy gay couple in Los Angeles deciding to have a child. They choose a surrogate mother. Okay, that's the new normal from 2012. Came out in 2012. Creeping normality. This was the first term that kind of interested me to find out what is creeping normality because you used to hear about creeping socialism. So what's creeping normality? Creeping normality, also called gradualism or landscape amnesia, is a process by which a major change can be accepted as normal and acceptable if it happens slowly through small, often unnoticeable increments of change. The change could otherwise be regarded as remarkable and objectionable if it took place in a single step or short period. Did you catch all that? Did you catch all that? The change could otherwise be regarded as remarkable and objectionable if it took place in a single step or short period. So they gradually change what you believe to what they want you to believe. There's going to be more and more vocab terms, and they're all going to have similar definitions. The amount of this is what... Just keep watching. What is an example of creeping normality? Now, remember, this is coming from Wikipedia, so I haven't read this yet. I bet you it's going to be something seemingly normal. Creeping normality is an objectionable change that is accepted because it occurs slowly. The term is often used to explain indifference to environmental change. For example, people may tolerate excessive smog in a particular city that worsens over decades. Okay, something, something normal. Now, here's some of the definitions. There are a number of metaphors related to creeping normality, including boiling frog, camel's nose, gaslighting, defeat and denial, first they came, foot in the door technique, if you give a mouse a cookie, moving the goalposts, normalization of deviance, Overton window, principius obsta, salami tactics, shifting baseline, slippery slope, technological change as a social process, tyranny of small decisions, and change blindness. They present it as a normal, natural cause of events, but it's all by design. Okay, I'm not going to read all this, but shifting baseline. This is the key term of the week. A shifting baseline, also known as a sliding baseline, is a type of change to how a system is measured, usually against previous reference points, baselines, which themselves may represent significant changes from an even earlier state of the system. You may think being forced to wear a mask or get a vaccination is insignificant, but when you begin to compile mandate after mandate and loss of freedom after freedom, it becomes very significant. As each thing is taken away, we face what is known as the shifting baseline syndrome. This syndrome changes our idea of a new and acceptable normal. Soon, we will not remember what it was like to have the freedoms we once did. Now, the example they use has to do with the amount of fish that are in the ocean. So if your numbers are just based on different points in time, you don't realize that there used to be a gazillion fish and now there's just this many. And I used to always wonder with like sales departments, sales goals, quarterly goals, you keep going up. There's a point where you can't hit any more profit. So, you know, what happens there? You're still making a ton of money, but your profits are, are not as big. So then that's where like these engineered, it seems like there's these fake collapses that all business people agree upon. Like, all right, we're going to tank this year so that we could do our little incremental 3% growth every year. Because at some point, you know, what happens? You need a, a reset, a great reset, right? But as we look down, there's some language in here that's important. In this way, large declines in ecosystems or species over long periods of time were and are masked. There is a loss of perception of change that occurs when each generation redefines what is natural. Now everybody's like saying we're living in the upside down. What the heck is going on? It's Twilight Zone. 
That's what all of this is. It's strange for us because we don't know that it's intentional. It seems like all these things are just happening by accident, but they're not. It's all on purpose. And as you saw with the moon is a harsh mistress, 1966, these tactics were already known. And it was word for word what you have in Australia. Boiling frog. The boiling frog is a fable describing a frog being slowly boiled alive. The premise is that if a frog is put suddenly into boiling water, it will jump out. But if the frog is put in tepid water, which is then brought to a boil slowly, it will not perceive the danger and will be cooked to death. Slowly, they boil you slowly. Nobody, but nobody eats the Simpson. Camel's nose. The camel's nose is a metaphor for a situation where the permitting of a small, seemingly innocuous act will open the door for larger, clearly undesirable actions. Chess moves, dude. They're playing chess on us. You accept this, and then they get to do this. You, ex- I, I, you know what I, all the words I'm trying to say here, but I'm not going to say them, but... You know, you, you put something on your face and you put up with that. Then, hey, let's see what else they'll put up with. Oh, you'll put up with that. How about this one? How about, okay, you put up with that too. I mean, we didn't think you would go for that. Oh, you, you went for that. All right, how about this? Let's see how far they'll go. And as you watch some of the resistance to this, it's almost as if the resistance is being observed and calculated to see how far they could bring so that the next time they try this, they'll know how to see if they could keep pushing further. Change blindness is a perceptual phenomenon that occurs when a change in a visual stimulus is introduced and the observer does not notice it. For example, observers often fail to notice major differences introduced into an image while it flickers off and on again. People's poor ability to detect changes has been argued to reflect fundamental limitations of human attention. Change blindness has become a highly researched topic (laughs) and some have argued that it may have important practical implications in areas such as eyewitness testimony and distractions while driving (laughs) or perhaps other things. Defeat in detail. Defeat in detail or divide and conquer is a military tactic of bringing a large portion of one's own force to bear on small enemy units in sequence, rather than engaging the bulk of the enemy force all at once. This exposes one's own units to many small risks, but allows for the eventual destruction of an entire enemy force. Divide and conquer. You got half the people that want to do that and half the people that don't. You got half the people that want to, uh-huh, and half the people don't, divide and conquer. Democratic backsliding. Democratic backsliding, also known as autocratization and de-democratization, is a gradual decline in the quality of democracy, the new normal, and the opposite of democratization. If unchecked, democratic backsliding results in the state losing its democratic qualities becoming an autocracy or authoritarian regime. And let me just pause here. As I read this, see, they're reading it as, oh, well, you know, it's an unfortunate thing when this happens. But that's the way I read it is, oh, well, what do you know? If we want to destroy a democracy and create the gradual decline in the quality of it, uh, we, we could have a whole bunch of unchecked backsliding results. And uh, you'll lose your democratic qualities and, ah, you know, in the end, it'll just become an autocracy or an authoritarian regime. Sure be, sure be sad to lose all that democracy you had there. Democratic decline is caused by the state-led weakening of political institutions that sustain the democratic system, such as the peaceful transition of power or free and fair elections. Hmm... Although these political elements are assumed to lead to the onset of backsliding, other essential components of democracy, such as infringement of individual rights, hmm, especially freedom of expression, hmm, question the health, efficiency, and sustainability of democratic systems over time. None of this is by accident. 
no, that's they have defined terms with stages. This is a playbook. Learn it. First they came. First they came. You know this one. First they came for this group, then they came for this group, and when they came for me, there was no one left. And that's what all the people that are saying, hey man, we don't want this. So stop making us do this. Stop making us do this. Foot in the door technique. This is kind of like the camel's nose. Foot in the door technique is a compliance tactic that aims at getting a person to agree to a large request by having them agree to a modest request first. Oh, it's just a thing you put on your face. That's it. It's just 14 days. Stop the spread. The technique works by creating a connection between the person asking for a request and the person that is being asked. If a smaller request is granted, then the person who is agreeing feels like they are obligated to keep agreeing to larger requests to stay consistent with the original decision of agreeing. This technique is used in many ways and is a well-researched tactic for getting people to comply with requests. The saying is a reference to a door-to-door salesman who keeps the door from shutting with his foot, giving the customer no choice but to listen to the sales pitch. Gaslighting. Gaslighting is a colloquialism that is defined as making someone question their own reality. The term, they use this all the time, by the way. Obviously, if you're here, you know that. The term is also used informally to describe someone, a gaslighter, who persistently puts forth a false narrative which leads another person or a group of people to doubt their own perceptions to the extent that they become disoriented and distressed. This dynamic is generally only possible when the audience is vulnerable, such as in unequal power relationships or when the, or when the audience is fearful of the losses associated with challenging the false narrative. Mm Mm-hmm. Gaslighting is not necessarily malicious. Fuck, yeah, right. More intentional? Always. Although in some cases it is. No, most of the time it is. Some cases it's not intentional. Most of the time, the people doing it know what they're doing. If you give the mouse a cookie, it's described as a circular tail illustrating a slippery slope. The entire story is told in second person. A boy gives a cookie to a mouse. The mouse then asks for a glass of milk. He then requests a straw to drink the milk, a mirror to avoid a milk mustache, nail scissors to trim his hair in the mirror, and a broom to sweep up his hair trimmings. Next, he wants to take a nap, have a story read to him, draw a picture, and hang the drawing on the refrigerator. Looking at the refrigerator makes him thirsty, so the mouse asks for a glass of milk. The circle is complete when he wants a cookie to go with it. Slippery slope is not a fallacy of logic. They say it is. It's in the book. But I'm almost like, no, 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 no. Slippery slope is real. That's what everything I just read today is a slippery slope, a shifting baseline, gradualism, foot in the door technique, landscape amnesia. A term related to creeping normalcy is landscape amnesia, forgetting how different the surrounding landscape looked 50 years ago because the change from year to year has been so gradual. Take a little bit of freedom here, introduce a tax here. Oh, it's just 1% on the wealthy. Oh, it's just a property tax. Oh, it's just a sales tax. (laughs) Moving the goalposts. Moving the goalposts or shifting the goalposts is a metaphor derived from goal-based sports that means to change the criteria goal of a process or competition while it is still in progress in such a way that the new goal offers one side an advantage or disadvantage. 14 days to stop the spread. Oh, we got there. Oh, no. Now we need the... Oh, we got that. Oh, well, now you need two... You know what it is. Normalization of deviance is a term used by the American sociologist Diane Vaughn to describe the process in which deviance from correct or proper behavior becomes normalized in a corporate culture. The Overton Window. The Overton Window is the range of policies politically acceptable to the mainstream population at a given time. It is also known as the Window of Discourse. Salami Slicing Tactics. 
Salami slicing tactics, also known as salami slicing, salami tactics, the salami slice strategy, or salami attacks, is a divide and conquer process of threats and alliances used to overcome opposition. With it, an aggressor can influence and eventually dominate a landscape, typically political, piece by piece. In this fashion, the opposition is eliminated slice by slice, canceled until it realizes, usually too late, that it is virtually gone in its entirety. In some cases, it includes the creation of several factions within the opposing political party and then dismantling that party from the inside without causing the sliced sides to protest. I can't say them all, but you know, as I read that definition, you probably thought of five different things simultaneous, right? Salami tactics are most likely to succeed when the perpetrators keep their true long-term motives hidden and maintain a posture of cooperativeness and helpfulness while engaged in the intended gradual subversion. The people that supported this and, and this, they stated character in the live-action role-play illusion delusion that they perpetrated upon the planet For almost two years now. They stay in character. They stay in character in their live action role play. They know how fake it is and they're participating in it. Some of them just because they love the lunacy of it, but others because they know you you're not aware they know all of these tricks and they're executing their little plan. Okay, so our, and once you, fi- what I've noticed along this way is once you figure out that, hey, you guys are just acting, they go, huh, yeah, <laughs> too late, too late, oh well, oh well, gotcha, gotcha, we successfully shifted the baseline already, you're living in the new normal now, you can't go back, you can't, no, no, you can't, it's over, okay, so, if you don't do this, then you lose your job. Mm-hmm. Oh, but it's for the, the health and safety of everybody. Hmm. Salami slicing tactics. Oh, we got rid of this group. All these people had, got fired or all these people voluntarily quit. All oh, these people. Oh, well, we'll just replace them all with all these new people that we're bringing in. You know, a whole bunch of people that have no reference, no baseline of all those freedoms that you once enjoyed. Oh yeah, your memory has knowledge of that. Your baseline is somewhere. So we'll just bring people that have no recollection of it. And thus, if there's more of them now, there will be a new baseline established and all your freedoms will be gone without much opposition. Slippery slope. A slippery slope argument in logic, critical thinking, political rhetoric, and case law is an argument in which a party asserts that a relatively small first step leads to a chain of related events culminating in some significant, usually negative, effect. The core of the slippery slope argument is that a specific decision under debate is likely to result in unintended consequences. Hmm. The strength of such an argument depends on whether the small step really is likely to lead to the effect. This is quantified in terms of what is known as the warrant, in this case, a demonstration of the process that leads to the significant effect. This type of argument is sometimes used as a form of fear-mongering in which the probable consequences of a given action are exaggerated in an attempt to scare the audience, although differentiation is necessary since in other cases, it might be demonstrable that the small step will likely lead to an effect. Okay, so notice the one term here, slippery slope, which we've shown is a real thing they then say oh no 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 slippery slope it's a fear-mongering tactic the fallacious sense of slippery slope is often used synonymously with continuum fallacy in that it ignores the possibility of middle ground now they want a middle ground right and assumes a discrete transition from category a to category b see middle ground is a gray area it's non-definable it's it's liquid it's permeable 
middle ground in, in a non fallacious sense, you including use as a legal principle, a middle ground possibility is acknowledged and reasoning is provided for the likelihood of the predicted outcome. Other idioms for the slippery slope argument are the thin edge, the, the thin end, edge of the wedge, the camel's nose in the tent, or if you give a mouse a cookie. And to figure out who wrote this article, we could look at the example. This 1895 cartoon makes a slippery slope argument of how weddings would look in 2001 if women got the vote. The tyranny of small decisions. The tyranny of small decisions is a phenomenon explored in an essay of the same name published in 1966 by the American economist Alfred Kahn. The article describes a situation in which a number of decisions, individually small and insignificant in size and time perspective, cumulatively result in a larger and significant outcome, which is neither optimal nor desired. It is a situation where a series of small, individually rational decisions can negatively change the context of subsequent choices, even to the point where desired alternatives are irreversibly destroyed. Okay, now, they're presenting it again. Oh, yeah, that's it's an unfortunate thing that all these, you know, small bad decisions could, you know, lead up to this one big thing. It would be a shame if we introduced a whole bunch of small, poor decisions all along the way that lead to a big grand scheme to achieve some kind of objective that we had. An example that goes with this is on The Matrix of Evil. It was a VHS tape by Alex Jones and Ron Paul back in the 2000s, like the first decade. And in it, I forgot the guy's name, but he talks about gradualism. And he says, yeah, this is what they do. First, they say, give me your house. And you say, you can't have my house. It's my house. And they say, well, fine. Give me your porch. And you're like, okay, well, will you just leave me alone if I let you have the porch? Yeah. Okay. So then they move into the porch. And then the next year, once they've established the new baseline, give me your house. And you say, you can't have my house. Well, then give me your living room. Okay. Well, you leave me alone after that? Yeah. They get in. The baseline shifts again. Next year, it keeps going and going until before you know it, you have nothing left. So that's what they do in all the, in this case, it's about property, but it's with all different things. It's always about shifting perception. So as you can see, all of these terms are defined. They're not natural causes. They're not freak accidents. They're orchestrations psychological operations and as we saw from the 1966 the moon is a harsh mistress it's been going on for decades but if you also watch some of these old movies about like the medieval times and the the times of kings and queens they had all kinds of tactics and techniques to keep the serfs or the population subdued or confused and manipulated so now that you have these concepts in your mind, now you're armed at least with some terms and definitions to hopefully influence some of the people that still want to, you know, and still want to, and still want to let the new normal perpetuate. Yes, change happens, but you want to have good change, which is decided upon by the people to want to have a change, not a change that's artificially introduced and a mass delusion presented upon everybody. The entire book of 1984 is requiring people to live under a mass delusion, to train their minds to believe that two plus two equals five. I don't want to live in that world. The book was supposed to be a warning, not a blueprint. But in present day 2021, it looks like it's the actual playbook. Make sure it passes on. You don't even have to, you don't even have to pass the video on, just pass the concepts on in conversation that you have with people. May the force be with you.